Isaac Kalua, who is the chair, of course, of the Kenya uh, Water Towers Agency. Thank you so much for making time for us tonight. You're the ones coordinating all this, and you're already here. Uh, the complaints from the people that are uh, talking about how it has been uh, conducted so far. So my first question to you is, first from what you have seen, uh, their complaints, there was emphasis that the evictions uh, will be conducted humanely. We even had the government while supporting this, always saying, and the Deputy President talking uh, before, that it should be done uh, without uh, infringing on the rights of anybody. We've already heard what the people are saying. I'm sure you have been briefed what exactly has happened and how do you respond to these people who are complaining uh, that they have, their houses have been torched. Uh, some saying uh, it has been forceful. Some saying they were actually assaulted. How do you, how do you respond to that? Allow me first of all to mention that the current operation that is ongoing uh, operation in Mao is a security issue. And therefore, I will give you information that gets to a certain decision and a certain point that mm -hmm. will be very helpful to mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Regarding the issue of brutality, I can confirm here that we have very responsible team that is led by the county government, the, the county security team, and of course my team that is coordinated through the Joint Enforcement Unit, uh, and uh, which is uh, uh, coordinated by the Kenya Water Towers Agency. You will realize, unlike before, where we have had issues of human rights, and we are very sensitive about the tripartite tripology, mm -hmm. that we have to be very careful about uh, human rights issues. The operation is being undertaken during day time and this will be confirmed also by the county commissioner during a meeting and a discussion that is going to be addressing the press tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, there is clear indication because they, I think there are issues also that there was no there was no notice. There was a two week notice very clearly uh, about this uh, entire process. I will even answer. That they should move out within two weeks. That they time. should move out within two weeks Which is something they've also uh, raised concerns about. Yes. They're saying they've lived there for years. Let me, let me, let, let me. Okay, you, you'll respond, but they'll yes. live there for years. How do they expect, how do you expect them to move out and find a place to go? But I'll come down to all that uh, shortly. How do you expect them to move uh, to new places or whatever you want them to move to within two weeks? It's not an issue of two. First of all, mm -hmm. this, there is, let's realize, you know, why, when, when you're doing some things, anything in life, you must yourself, ask yourself, why are we doing this? Protection of Mao is a life issue. Mm -hmm. We really have to undertake issues. You know, looking at what the entire process, there have been claims about charcoal burning. Mm. There has been claims about uh, harvesting and illegal logging uh, against uh, what the, the minister has issued uh, in, uh, in this specific area. There was an aerial view that was done of Maasai Mao. And just for your information, as I respond to this, Maasai, the, the entire Mao com forest complex is 427,000. Uh, hectares. Uh -huh. We are talking of uh, the area that is undertaken by the by the Joint Enforcement Unit is only 121,000 uh, hectares, uh -huh. and this is mainly in the in the in the southern part of Mao. Uh -huh. And the specific areas that we are now having is a very small area where the, where people have just moved in in the last. Uh, one year only, just before the politics. You are sure about this, that? You yes, are this, sure about this, this is a situation We're according to, to what the they said. I mean, I mean, by no means, I mean, it's important to all of us Kenyans yes. uh, that, that these water towers uh, are saved. By no means yes. should anyone, of course, try yes. to say this shouldn't happen. Yes. Uh, but their concerns, I'm talking about, and I'm talking for these people being evicted, yes. that there's brutality, and they are saying they actually own these places and they've lived there more than a year. So I'm talking about since 1940s. Let's take a look at what they've been saying. Yes. First. Tukifikiria labda ni mashamba halali ambao watu walikuwa wamepewa wale ambao tulinunua kutoka kwao. Lakini baadaye hii mahangaiko ambao tunapitia na masaibu hatukuwa tunajua labda ni mashamba ambayo haikuwa ni Mashamba halali. Sasa sasa sa hii nalala. Nalala nje. Nalala nje. Mali tu. Hii kiwanja hii. Mm -hmm. Eh tu. Mm -hmm. Hakuna mali nyingine. Mm -hmm. Hakuna. Hey, hey. Okay, they've gone on to say and we had others saying yesterday we talked about brutality. I'm sure you saw that in our earlier story. Um do you you you're still saying these people moved in there within a year or so? 
Yeah, just the last one year or so. One year and a half. So these people that say, are saying have titles there, Botland, are you saying that does not exist or what is going on? You know, we, we have to speak good and we have to be very sure about when we present. First of all, we are very sensitive about life issues. You know, families being moved brutally and getting things done in the wrong way, we would not be part of that. And nobody wants to get to that. But, but let me, you let me, see, let you me respond see on the screen. this. You can see the screen now. True. Is, is that part of how they were supposed to be moved out, torching their houses? You know, this is one situation, and I want to encourage the media, uh, actually, yep. thank you for having uh, me here yeah. to have some of these things. Mm -hmm. You know, you may not also understand that there are homes, even during this time and mm. also previously, mm. where people actually torch they ha their own houses so that they can, they can, they can get some, some sympathy out of it. You may not ever know also that there are people who have been found with arrows that are actually poisoned for the purpose of uh, for, 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 you know, negative uh, publicity and also to create this situation. You may not also know that there are families that within this given time have already moved out voluntarily mm. without having to be evicted forcefully. Right. You may not ever know that there are also 7,989 profiled families within Mao that nobody is talking about and they are not being touched because it's a case of the of the court and there is a status quo that has been given. Right. You may not also know, so, allow me to finish mm, this, mm. you may not also know that those ones have also sold properties to other other people. other people mm. amounting to 12,000 people. Mm. In this case, mm. two rights will never make a wrong. Uh, you know, two, two wrongs will never, never make, make a right. right. Yeah. And therefore, you need to look and understand the other side of it. Which government would like to get their people affected wrongfully? To, to be affected, to be evicted in the way that they are presenting themselves. There are also professionals in this area, unfortunately and painfully. We are all born by different mothers, so, and therefore the so some saying, of the actions yeah. may not look at this. But so you're saying this, this hasn't happened? No, or if it, it has I'm, happened, you see, as I said, there is a security so committee team that will will speak tomorrow about okay. the way they are handling the process. But what I am saying is, let's go back. Why are we doing this? Go back to south uh, south uh, southwest Mao uh, or West Mao. Where in 2009 we, 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 we had to evict people. Yeah. Today, a place that was totally degraded is back with a lot of water, is back with a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, trees that have regenerated, is back with even animals, including they never elephants. Went back. They never went back. Mm. And we are not talking of areas that people are being affected. We're just talking of this reason. And that is why the deputy president has talked in the way that he has talked. That is why the county government of Narok is still is, is very firm about this. Mm -hmm. That is why the politicians, everybody is reading in the same script. This has not happened in Kenya before. And we really hope that that persists. Yes. Uh, but you're saying, of course, the issue of, of brutality, because these are people, these are Kenyans still, you're saying that will be addressed tomorrow. Yes, this will be addressed tomorrow. But let me, let me say, and, and, and don't press it on it. I mean, yeah. If something has been done wrong, Mohammed, someone will take responsibility. Okay. But in the, in the brief that I do have, mm -hmm. and also in advance, I know very well that we have a very responsible NCIC team that is going to talk about this. Okay. There are over 333 families. As in, this is the day two of the operation. And more is going to happen for about 2,000 uh, more that we are going to be working on. Okay. And it's being done with full respect of human rights, because right. this is what we simply have to do. All right. I mean, Mao complex and evictions and settlement has always been used politically. There's no doubt about that. Over the years, there's been a lot of politics about it. And you're saying right now the atmosphere is brilliant to do what you're doing. Uh, of course, there's issues about compensating them. And for these people now who are saying they have landed there, you're saying they want where, where the evictions are going on, issues of compensation or such like do not arise because these people have not been living there. That's what you're saying although they're saying they've been living there for, for years before and they bought that, that land. How are you going to do it differently? How do, you, how do you get a lasting solution? Because over the years, there's been attempts uh, to handle this. In some areas, you're talking about one area that people never went back, but in some areas, people went back. Uh, and we've never seemed to handle the situation. After a few years, it comes about 
politics gets uh, uh, plays into it and then we lose the focus. How are you going to get a lasting solution? What do you do this time? As, as, as uh, the Kenya Water Towers Agency, I think one of the things is that uh, we have been trying to read from the same script, all of us, be it the political class, be it the communities on the ground, be it the joint enforcement unit. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and this has been an issue before. And by the way, you, you should not blame the politicians. It, they are just being taken advantage of by us as Mwanainchi in some of the cases. And I'm, I repeat, mm. in some of the cases. Mm -hmm. You find that people take advantage, like the case that we are now talking about, just about one year and a half ago, or thereabout, people, there, there is an agreed space, a cut line that was agreed. And this was agreed by all the communities. And then you find people have lived including in, in this. Including those that are complaining this, now. Yes, including those who are complaining. And others have even gone even further, more than deeper. 10 kilometers mm -hmm. deeper mm -hmm. into, into, into the space that we have all agreed on the same. One thing that we are going to do, and, and I can assure you, the good thing is, one, we have the goodwill. Yes. We understand why we must protect. It's a constitutional thing. Yes. Article 26, Article 42 and 43, this is a constitutional right that we must uh, be able to deal with. We now have teams. There is surveillance that is of the highest order. The Kenya Water Towers is engaging now and will be putting in uh, the drones to be able to control and be able to manage the place in a, you know, a, a real-time kind of a basis. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of consultation within the community. As I said, it's, it's a security issue. And, and therefore, it, you know, once we take it up from that point of view, then the rest becomes an issue. Previously, you just find people engaging and they, they politicize the issue, not, not the politicians doing it that way. And therefore, advantage is taken over, over these people. So coordination is what we are going to do, right? Mm -hmm. Surveillance at its uh, best. The communities now do understand why this is, what is being done must be done. And, and it's just a taking responsibility by all. Look at Kenya Forest Service. They came in on, uh, on 17th, they gave the plane, we did the, the entire surveillance. Look at uh, the chairman of Kenya Forest Service, together with his team, they looked at the entire process. We went further, we found that uh, the administration police mm. officers, some of them, we're not doing things right. right. He went ahead and there was a meeting that agreed, let us remove the APs in this uh, kind of an operation. These are things as of security nature and they will be addressed at the right time. But it never happened before, despite a lot of efforts from all quarters. Right. But who has given this direction? His Excellency, the Deputy President. We are forcing this process. Okay. We have a very responsible uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, an on-ground uh, soldier in the name of uh, Mweshimiwa Tobiko. He is making sure that things happen. All right. That so. reading from the same script is what is being done different, and I can assure you that a lot is going to be done to ensure that we... Finally, environmental is, of course, the most destructive uh, uh, group is the loggers, who most of the times in this country... Uh, powerful and influential people that is in political and business circles. First, do you agree with that? And is, is that a concern to you and how are you going to handle that? Uh, say that again, the, the, the loggers. Yes. Uh, what about There's them? been logging. Yes. Okay. And mostly people say when we are fighting, or, or not fighting, we're trying to save mm -hmm. uh, our forest, sometimes we overlook these people who do logging because of the connections and the power they have, influence in politics and business. Is that something you are facing or you're planning to do as well? Uh, I'll, I'll is it about, my, my question is, is it about the settlers only? N no, it's not just about the settlers, it's about livelihoods. There are many people who are looking at uh, logging as a livelihood issue. Mm. Uh, but again, look at the response from the, from the recent task force and the recommendations, which are live and you have already mm. uh, covered these mm. issues. I think it's, as a country, what direction can we take? Because if we need logging, why do people do logging? We need timber. You can import timber over a period of time and have regeneration in some of these areas in a very big way. Because it's supervision. Yes, with a legal. lot of supervision. Right. The and that is, if it's done that is why we are looking now at, uh, at uh, surveillance at its best mm -hmm. so that we can be able to deal with this. There are so many alternatives. 
and when you realize as a country even those people with the with the with the timber processing uh, business and all that and i respect them mm. and nobody it should never be misconstrued that someone is talking without understanding how many people are employed mm. in this industry mm. Mm. we all do but what is the bigger picture that we should be looking at as a country a country without water haven't we seen countries that are suffering and mm. people are suffering wi without good air? Haven't we seen the people suffering with so much that do we want to get to that point as a country? Just at the expense of a few people working on all this, yet they can be engaged in Otherwise. other areas and earn equally the same mm. or even more at, uh, for the good of the country. It's definitely a uh, topic we'll be discussing in the, in the coming days, but we thank you so much for making time for us, uh, Dr. Isaac Kalua. Uh, and again, good luck. This is Thank a dicey you. one. Just doing a good job, and right. uh, we are ensuring we are doing what we have to do. <laughs> uh, I mean, whatever it takes, God right. help us, and right. we should pray for our nation.